Okay, Year 12. I want to go through this question because uh, it's a HSC 2012 question 16 because we started in class but we didn't finish it. And it's important when you have questions like these that you actually put a little time and you persist with them, you struggle with them, as I constantly say. So let's have a look at it. The question here says the diagram shows a point T on the unit circle, X squared plus Y squared equals 1, at an angle of theta from the positive axis where theta is between naught and pi and 2 or naught and 90 degrees. And the first thing we need to take away from this is that that distance is one unit. So what we can do now is we can, and this is how I was starting it, if you remember, if I draw a line straight down there that's at 90 degrees, and this is my x distance, and this is my y distance for this coordinate point here, t, x, and y. And what we can do is we can write the point t in terms of theta instead of x and y. Now, if we look down here at this diagram, we can see in this right angle triangle that sine theta equals y on 1. So sine theta equals y. So there's my y value, sine theta. And then over here I can say that cos theta equals x on 1. So cos theta equals x. And all of a sudden, I've got x and y in terms of cos theta and sine theta. Because my question asks, show the equation of the line PT is x cos theta plus y sine theta. So to get the equation of the line, I need a point, which I now have. I have t, which is x and y, and I need a gradient. Now, the gradient of the line TO, so the gradient of this line here, TO, if I can find that, well, I can find the gradient of this line, the one that I want, because it's perpendicular. And because it's perpendicular, I just take the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of this green line, the gradient of green line, so the gradient M of OT, well, that's a rise over the run. That's Y over X. But I've got Y over X in terms of sine theta over cos theta. Now, I can write that as tan theta, but I'm going to leave it as sine and cos because the equation that I'm trying to get it in has sine and cos in it, and I don't want to write tan. So therefore, the gradient, oops, the gradient, the gradient of P, what are we finding? PT equals the negative reciprocal of so negative 1 over the gradient of OT. So it's just a negative reciprocal, which is cos theta on sine theta, which is negative. Now, I have my point, which is XY, and I have a gradient. So therefore, I can use the formula y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. So I'll keep my y, and instead of y1, I'm going to write sine theta. My gradient is uh, minus cos theta on sine theta. and x minus cos theta. Now, if I multiply the sine theta across, I get 
y sine theta minus sine squared theta. And you're thinking, oh, how am I going to get rid of that? But don't worry. I'm going to get minus cos. Oh, I'll write x first. Uh, and remember, I'm multiplying the cos by that and by that. So I get minus x cos theta plus cos squared theta. Now, if I take that over the other side, I get y, uh, I'll write it because I want to write, come here, because I want to write it in the same form, how did they have it? They had x cos theta first, so I'm going to write x cos theta plus y sine theta, and see this bit, I'm going to take that over the other side, and I'm going to get equals sine squared theta, because it's positive if I take it over, plus cos squared theta. Oh, that's my trig identity. That equals 1. And look, there I am, x cos theta plus y sine theta equals 1. So it looked pretty ugly, and it was quite difficult. And getting this bit up here, this bit here, was a difficult bit. And, but, uh, but even if you couldn't access those two marks, you should be able to now do the next bit, or maybe. So you've been told that that's the equation of a line. So what you want to do now is you want to find the distance BQ. Now, BQ is the intersection, right? We can find the point Q. So look here. The point Q is the intersection of a line Y equals 1 and this equation that they've just given. So let's just solve them simultaneously. So we've done number 1. That's number 1. Let's have a look at number 2. So even though we couldn't do number one when we first started, we can do number two by solving them simultaneously. So what have we got? Y equals one, and we've got X cos theta plus Y sine theta equals one. Well, I'll call this equation number one, and I'll call this equation number two, and I'll sub, I'll sub 1 into 2. Okay. So I get everywhere I have a y, and it's only there, I'm going to write 1. So I get x cos theta plus 1 sine theta equals 1. So then I minus the sine theta and I get x cos theta equals 1 minus sine theta and I get x equals 1 minus sine theta all over cos theta. Now let's look back. If q, if q has an x value, well, then the distance is whatever the x value is. It's a straight line. It's a horizontal line. So, therefore, therefore, the distance BQ equals the x coordinate, 1 minus sine theta over cos theta. All right, that's pretty easy. It was only worth one mark. Now I have to find the area of the trapezium. So have a look at this trapezium. I'm going to highlight it all in red now. Come on. 
there, there, there. Now, this is my perpendicular height here. And we already know that it's the y value, so it's got a unit of 1. I've got the distance P, B, Q, so I have to find the distance O, P. Now, I have to find the, the coordinates of P, and again, if I just solve simultaneously with the line that they gave me, which is P, T. So, number 3, the distance P, T. Well, I've got y equals 0 this time, and I've got x cos theta plus y sine theta equals 1. And again, call this equation number 1, this one number 2, sub 1 into 2, and I get x cos theta plus, puts 0 in there, I'm just going to get 0 equals 1. So therefore, x equals 1 over cos theta. And again, because it's a horizontal line, because it's a horizontal line, the distance OP equals the x value. 1 over cos theta. So, my formula for a trapezium. My formula for a trapezium. So, the area equals a half h a plus b. So, a half, and remember, my perpendicular distance was 1, so times 1. My two values are 1 minus sine theta on cos theta, and 1 on cos theta. Well, that's pretty cool because I've got a common denominator. So 1 minus 1 minus sine theta on cos theta plus 1 on cos theta. All right. Well, that's just a half. And we'll write this as a whole fraction. 1 plus 1 is 2 minus sine theta all over cos theta. Let's just have a look at what we're trying to get it to look like. Oh, that looks pretty good. So here we go. We're almost there. Multiply that through and we get 2 minus sine theta. And the 2 goes through on the bottom. 2 cos theta. Which is what we needed. So there's number 3. So it wasn't that difficult, the, just the sine thetas and cos thetas held us out. But you could have done these bits. You could have accessed these marks. So the final bit, we have to find a minimum area, the angle theta. And this is where you go, I'm just going to differentiate that. So let's go. Here we go. A, so this is number four equals 2 minus sine theta on 2 cos theta. Right, A dash. And this is where you've got to remember the quotient rule, the bottom. 2 cos theta. Oh, the derivative. I better write that little thing that Mr. Tonkin's always going on about. Or you can use your formula sheet. The derivative, so... The bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of the sine is cos. And there's a negative there, so times negative cos theta. So the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top. Better get rid of this now. It's in the way. I'll write it over here. Sine cos, sine cos, sine cos, negative, negative. Uh, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top, put it in brackets, 2 minus sine theta, times the derivative of the bottom, derivative of cos is negative sine, so the times by negative sine, uh, negative cos. Oh, idiot, negative sine. All over the bottom square, well, that would be 4 cos squared 
theta. So here we go. What do we got here? Ah, oh, two negative two cos squared theta. And what do we got here? Uh, negative, and I'll just keep this in, minus two sine theta, minus minus plus cos squared theta. And this is looking particularly ugly, over four cos squared theta. So, Did I do that wrong? I don't think I've done that right. Oh, sorry, there's a two in there. So that's going to be four. And that's going to be two. Okay. So we get... minus 2 cos squared theta plus 4 sine theta minus 2 cos squared theta all over 4 cos squared theta. Now, I'm an idiot. Sine squared. Now, I'll put the four sine theta out in front. And I've got minus two. I'm going to write the sine squared theta first. Minus two cos squared theta. All over four cos squared theta. Now, my four sine the theta sits out the front. I'll take minus two and I'll write sine squared theta. Watch this. Plus cos squared theta. Get the second right in this denominator because it's not, it's going to be inconsequential. I'm not going to have it. Remember, you can't divide by zero when I put it equal to zero. And remember, our trig identity, all of that equals one. So we get 4 sine theta minus 2 over 4 cos squared theta. Now, we can stop there. Uh, oh, we can take 2 out. Let's take 2 out. We'll just make it easier. So I'm going to cancel. Oh, get out. 2 goes into that twice, 2 goes into that twice, 2 goes into that once. So you get 2 sine theta theta minus 1 on 2 cos squared theta. Now, to find a stationary point when a dash equals 0. And all we're worried about is the top. Therefore, 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Oh, sine theta equals 1, or 2 sine theta equals 1, and sine theta equals a half. Okay, where's our sine curve? Here it is, and a half, somewhere there, dot, dot, dot. it's going to be here. All right, let's draw a right angle triangle, 1, 2, root 3, pi on 6, pi on 3, sine that's going to give me a half is pi on 6, so we're going to get theta equals pi on 6. That's when I'm going to get this, and remember that theta is acute. Right back, right back here in the question, we don't have to find all of them, because theta is between 0 and pi on 2, so we only have to find the 1, so now, 
We've got it. Theta equals prime six. But is it? But is it? A minimum. Is that what we're looking for? A minimum. So I don't want to differentiate again. So I'm going to use a first derivative test. So I'm going to go pi on six, a little bit less than pi on six. So I don't know, pi on seven. And then I'm going to go a little bit more than pi on six. I don't know, pi on three. And then I just put them into my calculator. And actually, I use pi on eight. And I use pi on four. Only because I did it earlier. Righto. So, then I find a dash when it's pi on 8, and I find out that it's negative. I find a dash of pi on 4 is positive, and I know pi on 6 is 0. And what is that? Negative, negative, negative. It's a minimum because, remember, negative, 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 zero, positive, 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 therefore a minimum at theta equals pi on six. Now, now, this is meant to be one of the hardest questions because it's the last one. Find the angle theta that gives a minimum. So let's go back and see how we went through it and how you can access the marks even if you can't get the first bit. So the first bit was hard and remember the hardest bit was getting x and y in terms of cos theta sine theta. And then how did we do that? Well we said it's a one unit circle and we found sine theta or x uh, sine theta equals y on one so therefore y equals sine theta. Cos theta equals x on one so x equals cos theta. Then we calculated the gradient as being adjacent, uh, sorry, opposite over adjacent. So the gradient of OT, the gradient of OT, look at it here, the gradient of OT there is sine on cos, therefore the gradient of the reciprocal is P, uh, PT. Um, and that was negative cos on sine. And then I just used my y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. I used these values for my x and y, and there's my gradient, and out it popped. So that was hard. But you could have accessed the other marks to find the distance BQ because you just solve simultaneously y equals 1 and the equation they gave you. And you get the distance BQ. To find the area of the trapezium, we have to find the distance PT. Well, huh? well, not the distance PT, the distance PO. And again, we substituted in y equals zero and the equation they gave us. We found the distance o, OP, and then we used the equation or the formula for a trapezium to prove the area. And finally, if you couldn't do any of that, you got you were given this. You can at least have a go at doing the differentiation. Yes, it's hard. And I messed it up. I did my sign I did my signs there and changed them to a cos for some ridiculous reason. But you can at least get some marks there. I think there are three marks floating for that. All right, here, find that. There are three marks, and I'll guarantee you there's one for doing the derivative and getting somewhere along the line. Because at this stage, late in the exam, people are giving up. And if you can just persist, you can get a mark. So anyway, it pops out. I reckon you would have got a mark if you would got to, say, here or here. Anyway, you get that, you put it equal to zero. I reckon the other mark was finding that, finding that theta equal pi and six. And the last mark would have been for showing that it's a minimum. Anyway, that was a more difficult one. 
Uh, if you had a go at it, good on you.